welcome to the Rest of Slam podcast. You have myself, Queen Lizzie. La, 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 la. You have himself, Booker G. Five times. He can't move today because he's got a sore neck. And of course, he switched alliances just as quick as CM Punk switched from one muffin to another. It is our one and only Phil Melzer. ASAP. <laughs> isn't his name AS like dollar P isn't it Something yeah. Like that, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway we'll, we'll say nothing but our A dollar A P yeah that's uh, that's our Phil by Phil follows the money oh. and Matt proud to be bald Murphy what is the crack all good I mean I won after a long weekend of that film festival but I'm all good now yeah you had a magnificent weekend Phil didn't you we did. It was very long, but we got there. It was, just, it was just there's a lot of running around and a lot of looking after guests and going to different locations. It was tough. Mm. But oh, I bet. we had a great weekend and we had some great guests. Did uh, many people show up to Clockwork Orange? Uh, half. Yeah. Half one, which Ooh. is pretty good. Yeah. And they got the message from himself. Yeah. Yep. Mr. Yeah. McDowell. Yeah, the guy that came over, Chris Rowe, is actually his talent manager. Oh, cool. So that's, that's fantastic. How, that's how we were able to get that. Yeah. I mean, I heard one of your guests um, gave you a bit of a Jeepers Creepers vibe, right? Mm. Oh, definitely. He was actually, mm. one, Jonathan Breck, is, isn't he? he was really, really nice. He was super nice. Mm. He, he's my favorite guest we've ever had. And I'll say well, that on this. That's, oh, that's, a that's, big thing. that's a big compliment coming from you, Phil. My God, that's you. She's saying nothing. Oh, mm. well, we're delighted that went so well, Phil. Congratulations as well. Uh, know, a I, massive I want achievement. To, on to next year, we go again. Absolutely. Let's Back just, to the drawing board. Let's just hope Malcolm McDowell isn't a listener, though, Phil, when you said that. Did I say, well, now I'm fucking glad that I'm not, didn't go over the court. <laughs> you know, everyone loves Phil, so. They do. They, they do, Phil, they do, he knows. So Yo. guys, we are going to kick straight into, I suppose, the news for this week. Lots going on, as usual. We're only getting over the shock last week, I'm sure Jesus it keeps coming. But um, we'll plow through because we love it. We love the excitement, we love the juice. And um, wrestling, it's a very exciting time to be a wrestling fan at the moment. So kicking straight off, the rumour mill is gone into overdrive absolute overdrive there is sparks flying everywhere there are pot shots being called everywhere but um apparently a tag team from AEW have been putting out the feelers to see what maybe um the grass is like on the other side mm. now of course it's the books right and they're obviously currently suspended and um, their bt youtube show is also on a hiatus mm. um I don't believe they're advertised anymore for the next pay-per-view. Um, so, yeah, lots going on. But apparently they put out the feelers in WWE. Now, they're contracted, I believe, until 2024. Yeah. So um, maybe nothing will come of it. They're just kind of checking to see if the water is warm, I suppose. Um, what do you make of this? Just rumours or is there is there meat in the sandwich? Uh, there's a lot of things. If you look at this in a lot of ways, because I heard today that Tony Khan's going to add time on. To the contracts. Uh, okay. So Kenny Omega's was coming up at the end of the year, but now it could be another six months. Mm. Right. That's but not going to. That's a that's very not, Vince McMahon thing to do. That's not going to yeah. help their relations at all. No. no. Not at all. And, and that, also, as well, they're just sending out feelers for more money off Tony Khan. Ah, yeah, absolutely. Of course they are. Absolutely. My God, I can't see them walking away from that anytime soon. And as oh. well as that, huge change in pecking order as well because you'll be going from EVPs now you might go into a top program in WWE if you were yeah, to jump yeah. ship but you are still at the end of that you're a talent do you know what I mean so you're not going to have as much pull oh, um, just, just one last thing on this whole thing um, I heard as well that they can't fire anyone because there'd be lawsuits yeah that's that's something going around the right mm, I'd say there's a lot of litigation and a lot of red tape around that for sure yeah. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how that all plays out. Um, Matt, would you like to see Bucks in WWE? I mean, I remember a while back we were talking about rumors of Cody coming back to WWE, and we actually know how to feel. Like, we don't know if he's going to WWE. Is he? Is he? 
now he well he still is WWE. I keep forgetting. Oh wait, he's injured. Forgot about that. But mm. uh, I could see it maybe actually happening because I feel like with Triple H in charge, because Creative knows who the young bucks are, and it's not like he's gonna like push them straight forward. They're gonna remind everyone who they are. Maybe build them up um, uh, at the end, and then work their way up with a bit of a reputation. So how AEW is coming at the moment? If we hear more backstage drama, I could definitely see them signing a contract with mm-hmm. them anyway. So I know they have to wait till twenty twenty four, but um, and I'll give them at least another year to talk to an account, maybe flush things out. You never know, but I could see it happening. I could see yeah. that. It would be a shame if we never got the box against the Usos. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah it would that's be. a that's the that's literally the last thing we need is the box against Usos. Maybe Omega against Roman Reigns or something like that. Like, but boxing street profits. I'd like to see that. Yeah. You know, the opportunities are endless for sure for them in oh, WWE. Yeah. You know, but it's just we're just going to see how this all plays out. As you said, with lawsuits and legalities and stuff like that, contracts and. Oh, I don't know if I'd like to be in Tony K's shoes at the moment. Actually, I would. I would love to be in the middle of all that shit and sort the whole fucking mess out and organise it with lists and post-its and you name it, mate. I would be in there like fucking swimwear. Yeah, at the moment, we'll put up with like a great tag team, like uh, the Street Profits versus the Usos, because that has never been happened before in WWE, ever. Oh, never seen before? Where? Yeah. In the inside of my eyes, but... Hey, come here, look. We can't doubt that they put on put on it. We can't doubt that they put on a great match. Um, speaking of those who are currently not performing with AEW, lads, Bobby Fish went off on one. Bobby Fish absolutely went off on one on his undisputed podcast. Um, like I mean, there's calling someone out, and there is stripping the seven layers of skin off them, beating them in public, and then calling him out. Um, so there was a lot said. Um, some of it you can pretty much kind of go, all right, okay, you can kind of get with, but um, yeah, he would like to call him up because he thinks he can bait the life out of him, bait the life out of him. Um, shoot, you know. So, what do you think of this? Um, I I I think if he was still on the contract, he'd obviously be saying nothing. But like, mm. Mm, I don't know. I think is it so grapes that he's gone? I don't well, he's the, the Bucks and Omega are their friends, aren't they? Well, yeah. they're all running the same circles. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure he's just standing up for his buddies, like like anybody would do, really. Like, but also as well, it's probably to do with how he was booked for the whole year as well. Yeah, yeah. could be. And you know what? He can now talk about how things were backstage, mm-hmm. so he might be given a, a maybe a bit more of an inside view as to actually how it really was. You know, so. Oh God, it's that it's sticky and it's messy. Do you know what I mean? Um, and speaking of um CM Punk being called out, um, when he made his big WWE WWE exit, um, Claudio Castagnoli was recently on Chris Van Ville's podcast and he said or interviewed him and he said that the following Monday after Raw or uh, the Rumble, he was supposed to face CM Punk. And then obviously your man took off. So uh, interesting little nugget there, really, isn't it? That's that's something you'd like you would have liked to see in WWE days. Yeah, I, I think back then, obviously, it's nearly ten years. It's mental that it is crazy. Almost ten years, but like it would have been an unreal program if done right. Mm. Totally, absolutely. Like God help us, Claudio Castagnoli has the whole package, like doesn't he? Yeah. Because at the time, like, um, I'm not just saying this because, you know, I'm a bit of a fan of Claudio Cazzioni, like, just just out there. But uh, I think at the... Your bro from another mole? Yeah. I, mean, I don't want to get my personal <laughs> uh, personal information on the podcast nowadays, mm-hmm. but let's move on. Uh, <laughs> it's like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito. <laughs> Twins. You <laughs> <laughs> are very, like, we need to dress you up as... um. Oh, you could catch a F- um, fiddle by the ankles and swing him. Probably, I, I, am just, quite, I am yeah. quite small. I mean, like, I just need to get the right bald cap and everything, though, right? Yeah, like, that's it. And that's, I don't know how you're going to cover oh, that's that a, mountain that's one air. Of those TikTok filters you've got on at the minute. Yeah, <laughs> I just like be moving around. You can just see. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> bald filter. Oh, that's so crazy. Oh, my gosh. But uh, if at the time uh, Cesaro was facing against Punk, even if it was just for a least two minutes, I feel like that they will actually, wouldn't say tear the house down, but they can really show. 
uh, well, at Claudio at the time would have actually showed what he's actually capable of mm. many times. So even if it was just like, um, oh yeah, I forgot that happened match, it would still be the best one of that show mm. overall showing. Yeah, they did have a match before in the old NXT, but like obviously nobody really remembers it. And I'm not sure if they were faced whenever they were in Ring of Honor together. Or... Not, I'm not sure. sure. Uh, no, I'm not sure. Claudio, I think Claudio. Yeah, I think Claudio came in just after he left. Right. Okay. Yeah, thinking. I think uh, it was just he came in and the last few shows Punk was on. Yeah. 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 Passing ships. So they keep passing ships and it doesn't look like. Oh, uh, really, weird! That's doesn't look weird like they're going. To, doesn't look like they're going to face each other in AEW anytime soon. Oh my God! Spot the married couple. Um. So yeah. So. Again, very, very interesting. What is also very, very interesting is as we are just surfing on the end of the wave that was WWE's Clash at the Castle, and uh, Triple H put out um, a tweet to tell us how successful it was, which is super, super positive for this side of the pond. So um, it was the best selling um, non WrestleMania event in WWE history. Uh, hashtag WWE Castle was the top trending topic on Twitter. No surprises there because the boss in the UK was absolutely massive. Oh, I have to read this one properly because I'll get it wrong. The post-show press conference drew the highest concurrent views on YouTube of any non-kickoff pre-show event. <sighs> well, lots of people watched it on YouTube. There yeah. we go. They did, of course they did. And um, it was the number one international premium live event in history. It was on at a decent hour. Well, there you go, you know, which is amazing because he ended the tweet with where should we go next or where to next? Like, that's amazing. That is so, so cool. And it really, really opens the doors for those bigger pay-per-views to take place in the UK. Yeah. You know, I, I really think it, it, it did. And I, um, think, I think you can do a Royal Rumble here to test the world. Oh, oh, no, I was just don't. thinking the same thing. I said, would you rather go to WrestleMania or Royal Rumble? A Rumble. Yeah. Rumble. Oh, yeah. my God. I would love to go to the Rumble. It's in the Alamo, Alamo Dome, I think, this year in, yeah, in Texas. Texas. Uh, our next year even in Texas but I would love to go to a rumble if it's 2024 I tell you it's on now we're going to a rumble simple about it that'll be done um so yeah I think that's really really positive news for um all of us over here to be honest with you you know um so what we like is um good stories feel good stories um to come out of our wrestling but what we also like to feel good about is our balls i include us all in this what's wrong i have huge ones mm. so that leads us to this podcast sponsor which is manscaped max <laughs> traumatizes like this is balls man i'll tell you mate i've got big balls so um manscaped is the podcast uh, sponsor for this week's show um four million balls worldwide are enjoying a lovely smooth close shave thanks to manscaped um ball deodorant you have heard me before harp on about the ball deodorant okay this smells ridiculous okay and you're mad about it aren't you yeah exactly right and matt tell me is that a manscaped head uh is it a manscaped head uh, for the sake of sponsorships yes it is indeed <laughs> excellent excellent but guys you've all used it here you all know what it's like yeah. isn't it amazing incredible yeah Everybody unbelievable it. every single body person should use it this yeah. is it and you know what the best thing is as well it's so reasonable okay it's affordable it's reasonable and it does the fucking job right and we have 20 percent off and free shipping with the code rest slam at the tin so head over to manscaped um pop it into your basket as a 4.0 Yep. Yeah, 4.0 is the latest model and package that's available. Get it into your basket, put Wrestle Slam into the box at the checkout. That will get you 20% off and free shipping. Head over there, guys. Be like the fellas on our podcast. Silky smooth mm. from Manscaped. So, from that, from our sponsor, guys, we have had an um, action packed weekend of wrestling. Quite a lot of WWE wrestling has um, taken over our weekend with, of course, SmackDown and Raw. So, it's nice to be able to review the two. Um, it's nice to be able to watch the two. Never mind review. It was actually nice to be able to watch the two. And on a side note as well, isn't it lovely and almost kind of, I suppose, nostalgic that you'd look forward to watching these shows again? Compared to going back how many months when we would dread it and we'd be like, I can't I, watch time it. last year it was unbearable. 
wasn't mm-hmm. it? It's so, so hard to watch. So I don't know about you, but I've such a renewed spirit for WWE. It's actually crazy. And I'm yeah. so happy about it. So, yeah. so happy about it. So Raw, I will go SmackDown first, actually, because the other, because uh, proceed, it precedes the other. Lads, we were just talking about Clash, the Castle, right? The, kick, uh, the, the payback for this, okay? Um, we had the brawling brutes taking on Imperium. Um, how over is Seamus still? Oh, it's incredible. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't want to jump on any bad wing, but his rivalry he had with um, Gunta is probably the best rivalry he had uh, probably in the last two years, if I'm going to be realistic. like Probably yeah. longer. Since, since the Cesaro days, speaking yeah. back as Cesaro. So, yeah, well, even Cesaro did. Like, so um, I'm really happy to see that Seamus is over. like Because uh, we, we're not just saying this as in, I go on the Irish, but we're all Seamus fans. So it's actually... <laughs> actually getting like a lot of notice and just getting so over uh especially totally. triple h guy as well so that's a bonus yeah. and you know what it wasn't a one hit wonder because that hot tag for sheamus was deafening right they wanted sheamus in they want to see sheamus and gunter again um and it shows there just wasn't a, a one hit wonder at, at uh in Carter. you know people were really really invested in these two wrestling which is so so great which hopefully means it may continue further even though imperium stood tall didn't affect sheamus at all you, now, you know, obviously, we know there's others, but how much no. miles do you reckon is on this? Um, I don't know. Extreme Rules Survivor Series. Yeah. Uh, I don't well, know. I heard, I heard the other day that there was an Iron Man match as Extreme Rules. Ooh. Like not, not an hour, but like thirty minutes. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Are you saying, right? Are you saying that there's going to be like extreme no holds barred matches at Extreme Rules? Are you saying we're going to get extreme matches at Extreme Rules this year? Actually, Extreme Rules. Phil, don't, 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 don't you dangle that carol and take it away, Phil. <laughs> uh, Seamus and Gunter in a 30 minute iron my match is what I heard. So I'm here, for it. Fest. here for it, definitely. Yeah. Um <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> sorry. Mute. Um yeah, sorry. I don't know, something's cut in my throat. Mute. <clears> throat> Okay, I'm back. Right. So, um, fatal four, uh, fatal five, way even for number one contenders for the SmackDown Women's Championship. There was only ever going to be one, um, one of this, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm. It was predictable, but it did. It was actually not bad. I quite like. No. The match was predictable. We knew Ronda was going to squash, you know, yeah. as many people as she could. But is it predictable that Ronda's not going to beat Liv again? Do you know what? Charlotte's coming back at this one. Where is Charlotte? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. No, I. She needs to. No, she needs to go to Raw and um take Bianca. WrestleMania next year, maybe. What the start building it now? Mm. Do you know? I'd like uh, Shayna Baszler to cost Ronda the match and have them yeah. have a few. Yeah. It would be cool if Liv won again through a sticky situation because this is how she like you know how she won the match against Ronda and people are still a little bit sour about it. So I think if this happened again, I think this I think this would be good for Liv's tightly reign, but good to set up the other two for their match as well, because that would be an absolute slobber knock. I know, but extreme rules, Ronda versus Shayna yeah. Baszler in a fucking, you know, UFC shoot match style. Because, you know, Shayna is always going to be a heel and Ronda's over at the minute. So. And would it be the winner determines Liv's next opponent? Maybe. Going on the Survivor Series, so. I can imagine this poor Liz is in the middle of like... Uh... Uh, Shayna and round of the two MMA MMA heads and she's just in the middle of the title I was like well this is going to be a tough one but somehow this is going to get out of this yeah this is it so yeah let's see how it goes but I like that Shayna turned up at the end and Ronda was like oh, I'm going to go and bait the life out of her but I am with Jerry on this one I think Shayna might cost her the match yeah. you and know? Morgan, Morgan will live to fight another day mm. yay do you reckon that's working that Liv Morgan hmm. uh, the I, funny finish didn't help her at all yeah I got a feeling that maybe we're actually gonna she's still gonna be turning heel down the line maybe this is gonna be one of those heels where she's listening to all the critics and like the fans just gonna be against her and that gets her then and she's gonna have a decent like heel run with the title yeah well the, the, uh, there was a shoot of what's her name um she married one of the Viking Raiders. Sarah Logan. Sarah Logan was in a promo video there a couple weeks ago. Maybe she could be back in WWE. Maybe she could join forces with Love and help her. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. I'd like to see her with the Viking Raiders. Yep. Could happen to. I would. So yeah, let's see what happens. But nice to see a few stories developing as well, though, to be fair. Braun <laughs> came in and tripped over the mat, got help us. You know me now, I'm no good, right? So I was like, right. <laughs> Poor Braun. But uh, just absolutely smashed his way through Alpha Academy. Happy to see Braun back. He's looking well. Yeah, I'm just, I'm hoping that they won't like uh, overdo this, like of just like constantly having Braun like destroy everyone this week and not have like an entire yeah. storyline built around him. So, because uh, I personally was not happy with uh, his title reign. Personally, they just like tossed him on because of the fans uh, no. just, like, getting over with him. So, hopefully, he'll I have it. Run this time. Can't really count his title reign because, you know, it wasn't supposed to happen because COVID fucked everything up. Yeah. And, you know, he never got to defend it in front of a live crowd. Like, no. Like, you know, like him and Drew, like you just you feel sorry for them that they were champions during that era. Like you just you're never going to remember it. But I would like to see him destroy Omos at Survivor Series. Oh yeah, we like big boy matches. Definitely, I think that would be pretty cool. And Omos was presented jumping now, shit, but he was presented quite well in um, Monday Night Raw. Uh, yes, and then the eating was really bad for him though. Yeah. Yeah. Great. But like you know, trying to find his character, I suppose, in in that kind of a way, just trying to. Figure out who he is. Well, I don't like Omos, but from what I've heard, he's going to beat Goldberg soon. Ooh. What? Don't even look at Phil now. See, he's, Hunter replied to his text. Uh, yeah, I knew Paul, I just, yeah. Well, I call you Hunter yeah. or I call you Paul. I think I think Saudi Arabia bit an Omos. Oh shit! That happened. That's happening soon enough, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, is that happening? Sorry, go on. Uh, early November, I think. That's sure normally in November, isn't it? Crown Jewel, isn't it? Yeah. I'm not sure. Well, I had my. I, I think, isn't it? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go ahead, Matt. <laughs> we're just, just going to like make a joke and just say, look, Omas is still young. He still has far. I mean, like, he's the same age as me. I can't get over that. It's weird. But anyway, he's going to. Go away. Yeah. Months back. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, it's your sorry. Yeah. Uh, and I was just like, when I meet him, I was like, yeah, going bald still in your 20s, that sucks so much, am I right? And then he just like, just brings me over in the next wall. But anyway, that's just thing. Uh -huh. I can but, see you, him and Cesaro having a good giggle in the corner both being bald. But no, uh, I reckon TLC, I think TLC is uh, instead of Crown Jewel in Saudi. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I, I thought I heard something a few weeks back. Maybe they changed mm. it back. After, with the spiders. After Vince... Been slept. Maybe, maybe. Maybe. We'll Pretty have good, to do a little bit of digging on that. Yeah, for sure. Um, and Drew was then set up to get his revenge on Sola Sokoa, who um obviously popped up on SmackDown as well. Um nice introduction for him to the bloodline, I think. Um, I just believe that they're missing a female who shall remain nameless. Mm -hmm. Um I like him. Uh, I like him too. The one thing I did like about SmackDown, just going off topic again, uh, the carry and cross black and white stuff. You didn't? I did. I oh, you did? Yeah, I yeah. thought you were saying you didn't. Oh, I loved that. How it yeah. finished oh, no, it no, I the did. black. I did. Oh, amazing. I loved it. Yeah. Are you a fan of Solo Sequoia, um, Matt? Yeah, I'm actually um, really happy to see that he's actually on the main roster. I think he's a, a good addition to the bloodline. Mm. Um, Great. He doesn't want to be over fully, I feel like, but like, um, they will go far with him, I feel like. So, happy to yeah. see yeah. We knew you knew by watching him, uh, you know, one of the few people oh. watching NXT 2.0, like, he, he was the one of the standouts, like, he just yeah. he had it, like, he doesn't need any training, like, he was ready to go, like, yeah. he just has the part, like, he looks at it and you know, like, it's in his blood, like, so he's a total protege, like, he, yeah. he really, really is. You see Rikishi on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And Sammy Zane's reply, he was like, oh, it's so a three of my sons up there. Sammy's like, well, it's really like it's four. I was like, Sammy Zane, just protect him at all costs. Samoan, you know what I mean? Samoan, Samoan Zane. Zane. Hashtag Samoan Zane. I, just protect him at all costs. Wrap him in cotton wool and just protect Sammy Zane. He's just amazing. And as you said, it blacked out them with um, further building the feud with um, Carrie and Cross and Drew McIntyre. I can see that being an extreme rules match. That could be your main event, actually. Absolutely. Probably, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. And then we'll see who's going to be built up for Roman. Or if someone's going I, to I, I have a theory on that. <laughs> well, oh, they, go, go for Austin. Uh, do you know the way they always do like 
champion versus champion and they obviously can't this time. Mm. Yeah. They should do a ladder match with Seth Rollins and one man grabs each belt. Yeah, I saw that out there somewhere. Yeah. Seth yeah. wins. They they both fall off the ladder at the same time. The belt. Belt he each. has to win the belt that doesn't break the dates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. keeps the universal and Seth gets the WWE title. Takes yeah. it to Raw. Yeah, yeah. I saw that too. And then Cody wins the Rumble and faces Seth at WrestleMania. That's the way to do it. Yeah. And then yeah. Roman still has the universal. But like, again, the I, I'll never understand why Rock and Roman would need a title. But I, I said to Tim the last time, are we not going to see Roman on each night? Could happen as well. They're like there was reports today that they're, they're they have no idea what to do. They want to they want another they want the title. The USA Network want a main title on Raw. Yeah. Roman's so so much part time now that he's not even going. I don't even know if he's going to defend the title for the rest of the year. The way things are going, because mm-hmm. I don't think he'll be extreme. He's not extreme rules. No. Maybe he'll off do chance Saudi or he'll do Saudi Arabia. Yeah, sure. maybe, but he won't. You know, he, he's not going to defend the title Survivor Series, and that's it then until Royal Rumble, really, isn't it? Well, they could do a four. They should do a four and four Survivor Series for sure. Mm. What do you? What think? if the fucking bloodline? Exactly, the bloodline are representing SmackDown. Just yeah. the bloodline with could Naomi. Happen. Yeah. Oh my Sammy god, Zane. that would be amazing. No, Naomi. Oh, Sammy Zane gets the pin for the bloodline. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. They will never accept him. Pins Kevin Owens. That is actually that's exactly what it should be with, Kevin, with Sammy Zane. Yeah, bloodline. he needs to he, he he needs a win, doesn't he? Sammy needs a win, like yeah. even and when he, they were doing his documentary, he didn't get a win. He always gets his arse kicked. And pin Kevin Owens at that as well. Yeah. Oh speaking of Kevin Owens, we're gonna switch over to Raw. Yeah. How great is it to see that that man has just been given the mic and let loose? It's great. He does not need to be scripted. Isn't he just mm-hmm. phenomenal? He's he's so good that Terry looked ridiculous. I thought Terry... Uh, he made, yeah, he made him look fucking weak as shit. Oh, he yeah. whipped him. Absolutely yeah. whipped him. There was remnants of um, John Cena and Roman Reigns. Do you remember that awful mm-hmm. promo? There was remnants oh, of that. Yeah. Not as bad, but like, you know, that's what it kind of reminded me of. Speaking of Raw, we have brand new women's tag team champions. Um, so Raquel Rodriguez and Aliyah are no longer tag team champions. And um, God bless Aliyah got launched into her um competitors. Somebody, um, somebody said today, right, about that that Triple H gave it to Aliyah to say thank you for all your NXT stuff. It's quite but, possible because she's been working away in the background. You know what I mean? And she's been doing everything that's been thrown at her and never kind of got any pay pay up for it. Yeah, yeah. you I know. That I was like, I didn't know if that was actually true, but like um. If, if it is 100% confirmed, I was like, that, okay, that definitely sounds like something that Triple H would acknowledge. His yeah, it, is, it does sound like something he would do, yeah. Mm. Which is never a bad thing, you oh. know? Well, she does hold the record for fastest match in WWE history. That's right, she does. Um, good call for damage control? Dude, good call. I feel, like, I feel like this is actually a is. good boost for them. Yeah. I feel like they will be the stable in the women's division in WWE, so I'm on board with them. Look mm-hmm. forward to see what they do with the tag titles. I can see them holding on to the titles at least, at least a couple of, at least a couple of months, at least till the next big pay per view. I think the- I think they'll be involved in a War Games match. Yeah, I hope so. Oh, I hope, I hope so. I hope there's a War Games match at Survivor oh. Series, and oh my like god, Bianca's titles on the line, and the tag team titles are on the line, and the winning team, you know, gets all the gold kind of thing. Yeah, like, wouldn't it be? I don't know how you do it, but wouldn't it be really cool? Like, if you had Sasha Banks, sort of like, which team is she going to be on? Yeah. Oh yeah. There's so you... much that's going to happen beforehand. But like, if it was me, I'd book like. Someone to be not in the match somehow, if that makes sense. No, so they can always take them out. So then it goes down to the last one, and then like you don't know what which team she's on. Mm, when the clock is, is running out, like you don't. Yeah, know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just don't know. I just um, don't know how you one? do it. That would make sense. That's all. Yeah. Well, the, the way the Dakota turned on, on. Uh, Candice that time the yeah. war games yeah, yeah, they yeah, were in yeah. this case Coming together cage, and she yeah. turned around and yeah. turned on her like kind of yeah. thing so she could end up in one cage and turn on them and join the other team yeah. yeah or they can't compete and someone comes out to replace her yeah exactly. there's only ways to do it I hope so, they, I hope I really do hope there's a t- the war games at Survivor Series yeah. and it's not Ascension. on NXT anymore yeah yeah, yeah. How- how great is it though that we can actually fantasy book like this 
because as you said Phil go back a year we knew exactly what was going to happen and we just weren't arsed it was so so difficult but now we're like this could happen this could happen oh let's do this oh let's do that such a great time to be a wrestling fan digging it massively and just pay regal whatever he wants to come back for one oh my god one fucking segment just to say war games. games i was i was actually i they think it's own it. back, right? oh, yeah. a war games coming back and i was like yeah that'd be unreal but if they have really move come back just to say war games then i, I think we'll all be more excited oh, what you die <laughs> I can't see them working together at all, no. either company. Well, they could just have a video edit of them saying it before previously and just put it on screen just for the hell of it. Well, that's true. I'm sure there's some... some yeah, I'm sure, pack. yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm sure William Regan had um, a few clauses in his contracts and I'm sure, you know, if they were like, we want to use this for this, I can't imagine he would even, you know, he has great respect for the WWE and what he had there. Um, we also saw Johnny Gargano's first match back. Um, How much we on- what? That was really good. I love yeah, it. yeah, it was against Chad Gable. So isn't it nice that we have a nice face with Johnny Gargano? It's really yeah. cool, but I'm starting to wonder, is he going to win the case? Ooh. I just don't see where your man or uh, Terry fits in. Mm. He doesn't, does he? No. But he was Vince's guy, yeah. you know, and we've seen this before. I can't. I personally, and now all things has happened, but I personally can't see Theory. Uh, I can see Theory probably like um, cashing it in, but he keep he failed at one point because I know I think I I didn't get the vibe that he's someone with the money in the bank that keeps teasing about when he's gonna ca- cash it in, like like the Miz did or but even when Edge did that they keep teasing it in the being yeah. of the gist threatening heels like. You so, know what I would do with him, and this is just just off half my head. Have the time keep running out, like Matt, Matt said, keep people keep blocking him, and then you're mm. on to that. You're on to the last week. <gasps> oh my god! Oh my god! You know, like <laughs> let it play and, out, and, and then it could be turn out be like you know the way like with Jericho was clock thing running down where the times going to run out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah. my god, how good would that, that would be? be cool, yeah. That would be amazing. Yeah, I like that, Phil. That's brilliant. But That's I, definitely inside scoop from Phil. There's yeah. Phil didn't come up with that in his own. He's taking you know, the ball right yeah. now. He's under the table. Yeah. Like, oh, told the guys, told the guys. Beep, beep. I, yeah, we heard I, it. I, my prediction, right, is War Games Survivor Series to be ended with the Fiend standing call. <gasps> oh my God. Fiend. He can fit in perfectly. I just I just think that you need to save the moments for events as well, not just, not just Raws. I'd like I'd like Karrion Cross to beat Drew. I'm sorry. Yeah. And for mm. I would like to see Karrion Cross and the Fiend in a feud. Yeah. Uh, I can, I would like to see Karrion Cross like defeating Drew Zell, mainly because, you know, I feel like Karrion needs this win so people know how much how much of a big deal he can be. And, you know, scrub our minds with the with, you know, the whole helmet thing that looks like something else to remind him who he was like. So Oh, the, the stripper gladiator costume. Yeah. Oh my god, what if he squashes Drew? It would be great. Uh, Love it. Why not? That's what I'm thinking. I'm like, what a way to send a message and tell us that this is our next top guy if he squashes Drew. Jesus Christ. Oh my god. Oh! Extreme rules. The thing that the, the, the pictures is on top of our head right now. We need Phil to get this out. We need we need Phil to get this out there to to Paul or XO XO Hunter on his phone apparently. Yeah. Will you send a text, Phil, please? I'll send him a few texts. <laughs> Thanks so much. The um so yeah, that was really really cool to see Johnny Gargano back and it being a nice face. Favorite freak. Dexter Loomis was hanging around um, the Chateau Miz Mar, Mar, what do they call it? Marie, yeah. Mar Miz, is it? Chateau Mar Miz, I, I think they Chateau. call it. Um, yeah, there's Dexter, oh my God, and Mr. Wanna Leave the House, out they go. And then Dexter Loomis is there at the window with a picture of the kids. <laughs> Lads, I'm not sure who we're cheering for here. Are you? Yeah, it's creepy. Dexter. <laughs> it's so creepy. Oh, I'm always cheering for Dexter, mate. Oh my God. But it's super oh, creepy. Do you remember when Dexter and Cameron Grimes at Extreme Rules in NXT had the haunted house? The match? haunted house match with the zombies. Do you remember the zombie was the referee at the yeah, yeah, yeah. referee? At he was the at the wedding. wedding. Oh, amazing. I can imagine. I think I know we're going back about theory, but when 
Dex Lumis kidnapped Theory at that one time in NXT. And he was at the yes. therapist's office. He's like, what actually happened? He's like, it was great He's fun. He's not that bad. His house, his house was all boarded up. There was actually cobwebs at the side. I was sleeping in one mattress. We actually did say a lot. It was like, I feel like that's going to be the Miz. As in, he was like saying, it wasn't that bad. I just had... No way. Taking all these luxuries away from him. But yeah, it's super creepy, isn't it? But interesting to see how this is going to go. And I'm interested to see if Indy Hart was going to make an appearance. Maybe, yeah. Maybe. I, I want to call this now. Next tag. Maybe um, Maurice is going to come out and confront Dex Lumps in the middle of the ring. And then Nikki Hartwell just comes out with a black hoodie and like gives that to her instead. And yeah, he- exactly. <laughs> I can see that. Defo, I can see it. Oh my God. Yeah, I want it. Give it to me. Yeah, defo. Lads, Edge and Dominic. Uh, do you know what I was the, what I was thinking, right, with the end of this Raw? I was thinking if somebody watched this that was a fan in the night and saw this and being like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. Like, with Dominic standing there tall. It's, yeah, it's like, what in the like, name of God? Like, just going on to his promo before the match, like, that was clearly done a hundred times. Yeah. yeah, it was good but, though. It was good, but they had to drag it out of him. I know, yeah, yeah. But do you know what? Like, it's it's nice as well that he's been given his own kind of two feet to stand on to see if he can sink or swim because his dad's a total pro. He's in the ears, do you know what I mean? But now we need to see what Dominic's made of. The only thing I hated you know? was why would he mock Eddie? I know it's his dad, like. <laughs> <laughs> It was yeah. just weird. Right? He has no respect for his elders. Jesus, my dad would kill me if I was like He that. doesn't like his Uncle Age. No, he doesn't. He doesn't like his poppy. No, or his dad. Does this... We're just talking about Eddie one. We're never going to forget that storyline. Does this end with a curveball? Well, there's loads of people trying to say that Eddie Guerrero's daughter should come back. She, I mean, she left NXT in 2014. Yeah. She, yeah. She's really good on the microphone. Well, I, I'm like, God almighty, it's such a shame that fucking uh, Dominic's sister isn't trained up. What's she called? Is she Aaliyah's name? Aaliyah. Aaliyah's name, yeah. That she wasn't trained up. She couldn't paste the shit out of Rhea Ripley, like. Yeah, that would be awkward. Well, she wouldn't that. come here up as Rhea Ripley, like, but. Uh, if, if that's the case, she's going to, if Rhea Mysterio's daughter comes back facing Rhea Ripley, Buddy Matthew just can be watching this at home, but like, well, my, his current girlfriend, ex-girlfriend, kind of. He'd done that already when they had that uh, altercation backstage. He was like, God, so just let them fight over me. Or... <laughs> so weird. But yeah, I, I, I'm i not really sure. What are the curveballs you think, Phil? Or is I, I um, Hunter telling you? Ray Mysterio goes in. I don't know. They were oh saying my that, God, Giants Judgment Day? Well, they are saying Riddle was written off TV last night as well. He may be off for a few weeks. Or oh, gone. Right. Maybe he'll come back and eventually join the Judgment Day because he could do with something different. They could. They could do with a change. Um, oh, yeah, like, maybe Ray turns heel and joins Judgment joins ju- joins Judgment Day. Yeah. What do you think of Balor's uh, gear with the little rags? It's different. <laughs> yeah, it's something different. I still want a last demon run, though. I'm not going to lie. Oh, yeah. Definitely. I like him as a heel, though. He's, he's yeah. better as a heel. And when, actually, he's actually winning matches on Raw, which when he wasn't I, doing. When I saw Finn coming out with a do rag, I thought, like, oh, someone's making a debut. Wait, what? Is that Finn? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I thought it was someone else coming to make a debut. It's definitely different. It's definitely Damien Priest. Yeah. There's no doubt. It's definitely Damien Priest. But I say, yeah, look, it's different. Let's see where it goes. But um, I'd like for the next time they come back to the UK that he's got a big match. Oh, yeah. A bigger without, match. Without a doubt. And also right. that Jordan Devlin has built up a bit. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. And it's one year actually this week, isn't it, for NXT 2.0? Oh saying? my god, NXT 2.0 is yeah. one year old. Um, when you... can we drop the 2.0? Do you think? I, I think you've got yeah. it silently, you know what I mean? Like nobody even notices it, like, yeah, the logo, uh, the gonna... logos, and the crayons. Get rid of the crayons, they're just gonna go down as like uh, NXT 2.0 and then NXT 1.0. And then just NXT, they're going to go down. One and a half. Yeah. But you just miss, you know, I don't know, it was just powerful. You miss, we are NXT. You miss that. Do you know what I mean? Because I know it's their developmental brand, right? But it just had stature and it just meant something. And it was just like, you know, don't F and forget about us. It's the kind of thing like with um, with Mel Gibson and Braveheart, you know, they kind of like, we're ready to fight. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and they were because the matches are bangers. 
Yeah. Well, they were. I remember the music video by Slipknot when they did the NXT theme song, and it was all the Ross in the middle of the ring. Yeah, yeah. Of the song, and yeah, you just look like, back and it's like this was NXT. This was like like an underground forbidden area for yeah. WWE. Felt like that. So need to edge back. It's it's just a TikTok show now. Like it's exactly same, the same that the TikTok market, not at the you know. Millennial rock rockers or you know Generation X rockers who were like, oh, this is like the old school throwback. They're all rockers, and Triple mm-hmm. H had that mentality of you know put rock music on, and all the entrances were by rock bands, and there was no hip hop, and no. so it's like everything became poppy. Yeah, poppy. Yeah, poppy. But you know what? I would imagine that when you heard that music, you would be so pumped backstage. Do you know what I mean? That you would just be ready to go out and literally lay everything on the mat because they were the matches were incredible, you know. Um, because look at us, we're like we want more games. You you know they were crazy. Like their ladder matches were not. It's just just mad. Um. So yeah, we've had a lot to talk about. It's going to be interesting to see how a lot of these things develop. I know we say that every week, but this week we actually mean it because there are so many ways that these um stories can go in all different brands. Um, let's see how AW goes um, for Dynamite. Um, we're gonna have to showcase some more talent, so it's gonna be cool to see what's gonna be on the, the what's gonna be the plan of action for the next week or so, and what comes out. Um, as mentioned previously, do not forget our sponsor of this week's podcast, which is Manscaped. I do want to go back. Sorry, Liz. I do want to go yeah. back on our like previous talk about Ray Mysterio probably joining Judgment Day. I can't really, I won't take it seriously because I feel like they'll put Dominic off Judgment Day. His dad is trying to get into the stuff he's into. And he's just like, look, son, I'm part of Judgment Day. And then Dominic's just going to say, Dad, this is my thing. You're ruining it. <laughs> <laughs> put him off. So, <laughs> that'd be smart. Oh, right? my God. It'd be like Dominic turning, or like Ray turning up in like a pair of leather pants. Do you know what I mean? Or like, you know, like, hi, or like in a motorbike having a complete midlife crisis. Do you know, like, I'm so cool as well. But like, no, Dad, stop. Or come on, we'll go for pints with the lads. No, Dad. Yeah, I'm at your bang on. So um, let's hope it's just one of them. Um, so, but what Ray should do is <laughs> invest in Manscaped. He will get 20% off if he uses the code Arrest the Slam. And we think uh, a little trim would definitely uh, suit him in Judgment Day. So 20% off with the code Arrest the Slam and also free shipping. So get your hands on some Manscaped. Treat yourself. Christmas is coming. I know, now let's say that we're just yet. But get yourself sorted, buy it for that special person in your life or treat yourself as mentioned. And we are on Twitter. Come find us at Slam Wrestle. Also, of course, we're on Facebook and Insta. So give us a follow, give us a like. Comment down below. What do you think of the situation going on in AEW? How are you finding Raw and SmackDown? Are you tuning back in? Is it taking you a little bit longer? Um, and maybe you agree with us, maybe you disagree with us. Comment down below. We love to interact. And of course, the algorithm loves it too. We are on Spotify. We're on Apple as well. Maybe you're at the gym on the way to work or maybe you're in work and you're having a little listen along. We'd be delighted for that too. So most definitely catch us and check us out. From all of us here at WrestleSlam, myself being Queen Lizzie and himself being Booker G Fab Times, our very, very proud bald ambassador with his good friends Claudio and Omos. It's Matt Murphy. He's been texting Hunter all the way through this podcast, telling us that, oh, do you know what I think is going to happen when we know that he's after been dropping bombs in the back? It's the one and only Phil. He's got all the motherfucking news. Messer. Guys, from all of us here, have a fantastic week. Enjoy wrestling. Have fun. Be safe. And see you all soon. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys.